In this video, I'm going to show you how I recommend learning R. I think this is going to work for you no matter what background you're coming from, and better yet, it's not going to cost you a dime. Make sure you watch until the very end though, because there is more than one resource that I recommend using. So the R programming language has had a fairly significant surge in its use throughout the data science community during the last year, probably in great part due to the pandemic and associated research. And I certainly don't see that changing anytime soon. And so I recommend for people trying to break into the data science field, pick one of R or Python, learn it, and get really good at it. If R is the language that you pick, it begs a fairly natural follow-up question, which is, how exactly do you go about learning it? Well, I'm going to give you a recommendation for that today. Besides, of course, my own R tutorials. I'll have a link to those in the description. Before I do that, though, take a moment to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, hit the bell so you never miss an update, and then tap the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And then if you guys want to support my channel, I will have links in the description to my PayPal account and to my crypto wallet addresses. Alright, so before we get into exactly how to learn R, I'm going to go over what actually learning the language is going to look like, and then also what not to do. So ideally, if you've mastered the R programming language, you're going to be comfortable with different stages of the data science pipeline. And what I mean by that is, suppose you're starting with some really messy data, you're able to pick it up, clean it, transform it into whatever type of format that's required, you're comfortable with things like loops and functions and simple simulations, and you can also create basic output like visualizations, reports, and models. That also means that when a project or task comes around that you just feel confident. You're able to put different things that you know together and get creative. What you don't want to have happen is you know a whole bunch of theory, like you know all the different data types and object types and things like that, but you're not able to convert that into any kind of action because you just haven't put it into practice yet. So you need to practice as you go and after you've learned all the fundamentals. Because if you're just reading along and just looking at other people's code casually, you're just not going to get good at it. I'm a huge fan of starting off by learning things like how to clean a data set or create visualizations because that way you're starting off by doing something practical, you're less likely to get bored and give up. But don't just learn only one narrow sliver of R. Like it's not enough just to know how to create visualizations or create models. Learn how to do something, go back and learn the fundamentals, and then learn how to do other things. Again, there's many different parts of data science from cleaning your data, creating visualizations, models, reports, whatever your final output is, just make sure you know different parts of that process. So now I'm going to tell you what my all-time favorite resource for beginners to learn R is, and it's the book R for Data Science by Hadley Wickham. Hadley Wickham is actually the chief scientist over at R Studio, and he's been the primary creator of a unified framework of packages called the Tidyverse. The Tidyverse is basically a set of packages that share a common framework, syntax, design, etc, etc. Each package in the Tidyverse serves a different purpose, whether that's ggplot2 for data visualization, dplyr for data manipulation, and these packages and the functions in them are meant to flow seamlessly from one to another. And this book is freely available online. Now, if you do want a hard copy of it, I'll have an Amazon link in the description, but there's really no reason to do that unless you absolutely want a hard copy. The digital copy is also in the description, obviously. What I love about this book so much is that it walks you through the various Tidyverse packages, but like I mentioned, you start off by doing things rather than learning a whole bunch of theory. Like in the first 10 minutes of the book, you're going to learn how to create visualizations using the very popular ggplot2 package. So immediately after picking up the book, you're learning how to create things that are tangible and useful. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the organization and the structure of this book. 
So you see, okay, there's a couple introductory chapters, no big deal. But then chapter three steps you through the grammar of graphics framework. You start learning ggplot2 and creating all these nice graphics. And it's just full of these chunks of code that if you want, you can copy into your own script or notebook and just have as an easily accessible resource anytime. Next chapter, it keeps going into coding basics. Then the next chapter after, after that is all about data transformation with the dplyr package. Then there are all these other packages after that, which will show you how to do things like work with tables, import data, get it into the specific tidy format, join tables together, deal with weird data types like strings, factors, and date times, lots of good stuff. But then by the end, you're learning things like functions and iterations, you know how to build models, and you can use the wonderful R Markdown framework for building reports where you've got your code and your commentary and your output all in one location. Now, is this a perfect book? No, it's not, because frankly, no resource on the planet is perfect. In particular, it doesn't cover much in the way of machine learning or building web apps using the very popular Shiny package. But the book is comprehensive in the sense that it's going to get you acquainted with the fundamentals, but you're going to be able to take any type of dirty data set, work with it, manipulate it, and get it into a nice format so that you can do other things with it. And at the end of the day, that's something we all need to be able to do. So let's say you go through that whole book, and assuming you take one hour per chapter or so, which I think is really on the high end, considering some chapters in there are only about one page long, that's gonna take you about 30 hours total. In my opinion, that's really not that bad. After that, you hopefully have a side script or notebook that you've created based on the stuff you've gone through from the book, where it's full of examples that are reusable. Maybe you've changed some little things here and there just to get a feel for how all the code works. But you do still need some practice as well as to get a feel for how various different people write code. And that's gonna bring us to one of the other best resources on the planet, and that's Kaggle. So once you go over to Kaggle, you can click on Notebooks, then you select R to filter down to only R-based notebooks. And you can find plenty of public notebooks where other people have worked through problems. You can literally pick anything here, skim through one or two of these a week or something, and you're gonna learn tons just from doing that. Ultimately, you do need to write your own code and try some real problems. Well, if you try any of these challenges, you are going to get some hands-on experience working with data and writing your own original code. Now, you don't have to submit anything per se, and this is not a substitute for the experience that you're gonna get in the real world, but it's much, much better than nothing, and it will give you something that you can put on a portfolio or a resume on top of that. So there you go. That's two incredible ways to learn R that will be effective, I think, no matter where you're coming from, and that won't cost you anything. Now there are some other honorable mentions that I'll point out. One of them is the Swirl package in R. This is just a package that you can install and load, and it comes with various different tutorials you can walk through directly in R Studio, as well as some exercises in each one that you can try. I'm also a big fan of the Code Academy website in general. It's also got a pretty nice structure to it for R, so it can be a pretty good supplemental resource that also won't cost you anything. But then if you guys do want to go the Coursera route just for the certification aspect, by all means, go for it. But at the end of the day, there are a lot of people out there who want to shill their courses, but I think there's just so much out there, there's just no reason to pay a dime out of pocket to learn R. Learning a programming language should not be frustrating or expensive. It should be pretty straightforward and maybe even a little fun. And I think with the resources that I've laid out here, while they're not perfect, they are going to give you a pretty solid overview of the different aspects of a data science process and make you confident in the things that you've learned as well as give you a little bit of practice so that you don't learn something and then immediately forget it. 
So I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it, tap the like button, and then leave me a comment down below and let me know how you personally learned R. Do you recommend the way that you chose to learn R? Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard on data.